girls, this is Kat Coluccio. You, that's how you pronounce your last Coluccio, name. Coluccio, yeah. Coluccio. And um, Kat has been on before during lockdown at one stage. Mm. We had an awesome chat then. But the reason why I invited Kat onto our group today and onto our page today is really um, based based on a lot of things actually, but the one most poignant thing, the thing that happened that stuck out to me the most was that there was a post the other day in the group that said, what would the story of your life be? Or what would the title of your life be if you were writing a book about yourself? And the comments below, and there were hundreds of comments and the um, predominantly the comments were so negative about yourselves. So there were, you know, um, how to mess up your life in 10 easy steps or, oh. you know, how I effed up my life um, and, you know, whatever, all of these really horrible titles to your stories. So I know about Kat that she's written a couple of really amazing books and she's just one of those, um, I don't know, you're a kind of force of nature where it comes to being a positive woman in the midlife um, sort of arena. So I thought it would be so awesome to have a chat um, with Kat about reframing or like changing our words or our thoughts about ourselves, why it's important, how to do it and how it can actually change your life. So welcome. The floor is Hi, your thank you. Thank you. It's just wonderful to be here with you. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation because um too many of us women had that little loop going in our heads all the time. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And if, if we can help just some of them just break that, it'll be fantastic. Mm, I totally, totally agree. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. I've given the brief, but you <laughs> obviously know a bit more about yourself than I do. So tell us a little about yourself and, and what kind of qualifies you to speak into this arena? Okay. Well, I'm a mum. I'm now a grandmother. I have a beautiful seven and a half month old grandson, married, married for 30 something years. So know all the ups and downs that come with that. Um, transplanted Australian. I've lived here for 20 something years. Love New Zealand. New Zealand is home. I'm also a qualified educator, qualified personal trainer, qualified life coach. And I just have a real heart for women, particularly women coming up around that midlife season from around 40 onwards. Mm. And probably one of the reasons why I've got such a heart for them is because I'm just an, I'm no one special. I'm just an everyday woman like everyone else out there. And I know the battles I've had. And if I can give some hope from how I've dealt with them, then that's what I'm, that's what I love to do to help people. Mm -hmm. And hope really is that, um, you know, that standout word really too, isn't yeah. it? Because, I mean, without hope, it, like, you know, even biblically, it's, it says, you know, um, lack of hope, you know, makes the heart weak. And, yes. and it really, really does. When you feel hopeless in your life, you know, you end up feeling depressed and um, or just even, you know, just even blobby, not even depressed mm -hmm. yet, blobby. Yeah. And, what happens to your thoughts when you get a little bit sort of like feeling a bit hopeless you start rehearsing you know the bad things in your life or yep. you rehearse in your head how stuck you are and you know or you look back and in, in, in regret or you look back in your life and you think oh I really stuffed that up hence you know all of those blooming titles of what people yep. would tell their own story yep. so um you know talk to us about that how how in the how because I mean I've and you would also have personally yeah. been through it before where you've found yourself in situations which you know every day is there's a new battle right every yeah. day is, you know you might have a couple of really good days but you'll find yourself in a battle at least you know a battle a week at least at least and there are all kinds of battles they might be big and they might be small but how you know when you're somebody who you know doesn't know how to get out of that battle by yourself what, what kind of thought what kind of words you know how do you talk your way out of that okay there's so there's so much there mm. so let me let's just pedal back a bit and um what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you three different ways that we can really get devastated by the power of words and then we'll kind of give you some you know some practical little exercises you can use to start breaking that because it's an ongoing process so even though I'll give you some ideas now there's going to be a few things that's going to take you committing to it just like you do with any new habit mm -hmm. so I often do a little presentation called are you living your life in 3d and the three d's are the things that can really really bring us down and the first d is deception and the voice of deception 
that can be really bringing you down and holding you back is generally your own voice. That's exactly what you're saying, Natalia. So that's the voice that rotates around your head going, I'm not tall enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not young enough. I'm not rich enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not enough. Wow. Yeah. And you know why I know all of those so quickly? They roll off my tongue because they've been my battles too. Mm. every single one of them mm. and to be honest they still are to an extent because they never quite fully go away but I've certainly learned to soften them dampen them right down because mm. I know how to recognize them now but if you're someone who's got that constant dialogue going in your head you are going to struggle to get up and get going because it's going to start to wear you down because mm. it's a constant constant loop mm. and you know I, I actually don't know any woman that hasn't hasn't actually experienced any of those voices. I think we all get them. You know, when you get up in the morning, you turn around side on and you check out how big your tummy is first thing. <laughs> Am I the only one that does that? Or, yeah, or like, yeah, you get into your 50s like me and it's like, oh, my God, there's another wrinkle. Oh, look, my neck. Oh, my gosh, I've got the turkey thing happening now. And, you know, we, we just talk down on ourselves so much. And so I, there's a wonderful little exercise I want you to think about if you have got that dialogue going around in your head constantly. Would you talk to your daughter like that? Mm. Would you look into your daughter's eyes and say those things to her? Mm. And, you know, I was talking to a lady about this the other day and we said, you know, it's almost like the baby photo test. Go find a photo of yourself when you were still young and vibrant and full of hope. You might be five, six, seven years old. Put that in front of you. Look into your own eyes and say to that person, you're no good. Yeah, horrible. It's going to hit you right here, isn't it? Yeah. And yet that's what we do. So you want a practical way of breaking that habit, breaking that pattern. One way you can do that is to get that photo and stick it on the fridge. Not the photo of you all skinny with your head on someone else's body. None of that stuff. Get the photo of you as a little wide-eyed, hopeful kid. Put it on the fridge. And start talking to yourself the way you would have wanted to be talked to. Oh, that is so powerful. That is so powerful. Yeah. So even like, okay, say so talking to that little little kid, how you would want, you know, to be talked mm -hmm. to as a little kid. But also, what about um, telling that kid what they're going to be when they grow yes. up? Even though we're midlife, you know, we still have, you know, dreams in our house. So much more. Yeah. So much more. Yeah. So the first thing is, you know, when there's when there's any loop of behavior of thinking or anything, you want to bring a, what's called a pattern interrupt, you know, where you suddenly stop it. Now, when I worked in a gym, um, one of the things was we actually ran a little mindset class at one point because a lot of my ladies were constantly telling themselves that I can't lose weight. I can't get fit. I can't do this. I can't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So what we ended up doing is I got them wearing rubber bands. And we did the old pattern interrupt. So the minute they caught themselves thinking, I'm no good, I'm no whatever, they had to flick themselves. Mm. And that little jolt stopped them and then they reframed it. Mm. Okay, I'm not fit now, but I'm on the way to getting fit because I'm turning up to my sessions. Yeah, I can't lift heavy stuff now, but I'm getting better at it because I'm doing my training. Yeah. So you start to change it. Mm. so 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 it's a little smack bum to yourself smack, yeah stop that um, breaks that loop yeah. yeah but I mean but it doesn't stop you thinking those things about yourself no. but you have to then choose to choose, choose to break it frame it yeah yeah, yeah. It's really good because I mean I have heard of that little rubber band test before or pin, yeah whatever thing yep. before but I've always thought well how's a little rubber band thing gonna make you go oh suddenly <laughs> okay, now I'm all so positive and like yeah it's oh, not right. it's not it's it's going to snap you out of that little loop yeah and then you need to choose to put a different behavior into place. Mm -hmm. So that behavior might be turning around and reframing it and saying it like I like I just did. Mm. or you may have some set affirmations or things that you've already written out ready for this moment and it may mean flick that stop yourself pull out your little card and go hang on a minute I'll do my I am's I am fabulous I mm. am a great wife I am a good mother I am and and you start replacing that loop with different habits now it's just like any other habit you know you can choose to eat your veggies or you or you can choose not to you can choose to actually be intentional and start putting these good things into place or you can choose not to but you know that little flick 
basically brings you to that point of decision. Mm. It's like, okay, I can choose to go back to that loop or I can choose to put something positive in place. So, so and the Robin beauty of it is as you... Sorry, go on. I think uh, we're lagging what just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but sorry. So it's a bit worn out, isn't it? Because um, actually, you're, you know, I was listening to a podcast this morning, actually, which is interesting. It was just by total fluke, I happened to hear that, you know, you've been doing this thing in your life, or you've been living this certain way for 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever years, right? And you expect your whole life to change in three weeks. It's like, don't ask for change in three weeks when you've been doing this pattern of behavior your entire life. So that rubber band's going to get worn out isn't it yeah it is I've been through a few trust me (laughs) (laughs) they wear out after a while (laughs) yeah totally yeah at some stage you're just going to know that you've made you know that switch in your brain because you're going to have longer periods of time between feeling those horrible saying those horrible things to yourself right exactly you're kind of retraining your brain how to think you know there's neural pathways and things like that and you're changing your thinking pattern and that takes time it's just like going okay I want to run a 5k race for the first time ever now you're not going to be able to step out and do that in one hit the next day or if you are you're probably going to end up in hospital in agony but you work your way up to it by disciplining yourself and making the choice anyone who's ever done any work with me knows that that's a big thing of mine you have a choice Mm. to choose to do that work that's going to get you from a to b and that's because you've decided that this place over here and that's you feeling good about yourself and then getting their eyes off yourself for being able to do other things that you really want to do um, is worth more to you than staying here stuck in this loop Mm -hmm. so if you're choosing that that's what you want then you'll make a choice every time by flicking that thing and changing how you think Mm, so it really is a choice but um what about say for example and we were just sort of briefly chatting about this before but what about because I know there's lots of girls in my um in the, in the 30 plus community who um have actual real real problems physical mental whatever yeah um, say for example chronic pain which you know about mm-hmm. and how do you get up in the morning when you've just had no sleep all night and yeah. you're feeling dreadful and your brain's so fogged and the kids are all at you <laughs> And, lo- and, you know, the day already feels long and you haven't even got out the bed. And how on earth do you reframe your thoughts, feel, you know, with those feelings? Yeah. All of those things are very, very real. You know, um, so many mums. I mean, like my son and my daughter-in-law are living downstairs. So I hear that baby crying a few times at night and I'm seeing them walking around like the living dead at the moment. And yes, I know what it's like to live with chronic pain. I have post-surgical pelvic pain that I've lived with for years and it can be so debilitating. And so there's a couple of things you can do. First thing is, if you feel that your negative patterns, negative thinking has gotten so heavy and so black, you need to reach out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no amount of of snapping is going to help if if there's depression or or that's kicked in. So I just want to qualify now and say if you are in that place, go see your health provider, go go get some help, be brave. There's no shame in asking for help. If you've broken your arm, you'd go ask for help for that. So if you find that you're totally stuck in that place, do that. And I'm speaking as someone who's had burnout in my 30s and ended up diagnosed with clinical depression. So I, I, I know how that feels to be under that weight where you can't break through. Yeah. But the other thing is too, sometimes you just got to learn to be gentle with yourself. So if you are having a high pain day, have, can you put things in place to help you manage that? Uh, can, can you have, have had a family meeting with your greater family or your friends in advance saying, this is what I live with, this is what I actually need and be vulnerable with the people in your life who could probably step in and help you. Mm-hmm. Again, we, we, we're so thinking about wanting to be the perfect mum mm. and you know look like we've got it all together because that's what we see of everybody else's highlight reels on on Facebook and Instagram and everything else isn't it mm. but the reality is you know that 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 old proverb you know it takes a village to raise a child well mm. it's, it's actually true mm. and and I know just like for instance having my grandson living here has been a blessing for my husband and myself we're loving it but I know it's a blessing for them too and we were talking about it a while ago that because that's how families always used to live with that intergenerational support. 
And now we have all these young mums sort of on their own, isolated, Mm. dealing with all these issues. And I think there really needs to be a bringing together of the greater family. And if you don't have family here, like Mm. when I moved over here, I was 34 with two little kids and no family at all in New Zealand, just the four of us. And so I know how lonely I felt for a long time there. I suggest you go out and start uh, intentionally talking to your close friends, talking to your family and putting a support you know, something supportive in place where you can check in on each other, where you can help each other out, you know, like, hey, I'm having a real pain day. Could you take the kids for now? Mm. We need to be doing that. We need to be acting more as a community and mm. less as individuals, I think. Well, that's a really, really good point. And, and and it speaks completely and utterly to my heart because I, you know, because as you know, facilitating 30 plus, you, yeah. you want to always try and be quite positive. You want to be uplifting. You want to be encouraging. You want to, you know, be empowering to, to other women. And, you know, but then again, I have my own struggles, my own day-to-day struggles and my own sort of long-term struggles and things. And I think, man, it's only been very recently as in like, this month pretty yeah. much where I've um, allowed people to message me or even actually being real about things and and they've messaged me and said but are you okay really yeah. and usually I'll be like oh you know just going through a thing and da 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 you know I'll be okay but just even this week I've actually gone you know what I'm going to let myself be um, somebody who somebody else can help because yeah. I mean what's the point of you know me having burnout trying to facilitate a community of people who are trying to get convince them that they can all lean on each other but not allow anybody yeah. to be that person for me so it's really hard it's really really hard to ask for help that is it, the biggest problem it is it is it's that but at some point we need to be prepared to be vulnerable and so many of us keep that wall up. And I know, like, I, in real life, I'm an introvert. And I think you are too, Natalia, from, from the things I see you say, <laughs> which means, you, you know, talking about your feelings to someone else doesn't really come naturally. But that's where it's key to find those, to really look in your circle mm. who are people who you could actually develop that relationship with and intentionally do that. You know, because because we need it. Women in particular, we we need other women in our lives. Now, I say that as someone who's oh, I'll get teary in a minute. Someone who lost her best friend to cancer on the morning of my son's wedding two years ago. Like the timing was phenomenal, and you know, she was like my sister for over twenty years. And I know the void that I've felt in not having that person who knew me completely and still liked me who I talk to every day and as as girls we need to be doing that so that we can be checking in so we can be vulnerable even about the stuff that we're embarrassed about but there's a place we can bring it out because then it doesn't fester up here mm. I when think you've got I'm, that other perspective I think there's a real protection mechanism involved here though because you know yeah. the world's gotten really nasty and really oh, yeah. dark and you know and um where people used to um discipline themselves with restraint and things such even things like gossiping about each other, you know, meeting up with each other and talking about the other friends that you usually meet up with, you know, um, you get, you know, quite protective of who you open up to because um, if you go online and you're attacked online for saying something really vulnerable, then you think, never, ever going to share anything again. You know, if you get that in your real life, you can just end up so insular. So what, what, what do we do? Do we just go, oh, well, you know, I am going to get hurt and I'm going to keep being vulnerable. Or what do we do? Do we journal? What What do we do? It, it depends on how you process your feelings. So, yes, I think for some people, journaling, absolutely. For other people, particularly extroverted people, they need to find those people that will listen because they need to process stuff externally. They need to talk it out. Uh, introverts like you and me, we need to find our one or two safe people that we know we can absolutely be ourselves with. You know, there's different, different things. But, you know, it still comes down to at some point, any relationship involves some form of vulnerability Mm -hmm. if you want a deep relationship you're going to have to open right up and you take that risk we take that risk when we get married don't we or when we when we get in a relationship with someone we take that risk of getting hurt um so i think we need to understand that that is a risk that's always going to be there however we we make it like a an educated guess or an educated risk you know what i mean like 
you 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 know who the person is you test who that person is you you you've either had a long-term relationship with them or whatever before you just open up everything to them yeah and certainly you'd be incredibly careful if it's someone in the online space for exactly yeah. what you said I mean you've been trolled I've been trolled anyone who has any type of profile online unfortunately that comes with it unfortunately it stings but because we feel that we've got a greater mission of trying to serve these groups that we run people we keep putting ourselves out there but that's where it's critical to have some good soft people where you can fall basically in real life who you can be totally vulnerable with mm. so interesting and we were actually talking about um this before we came on live and that is you know there's some boundaries that i've recently put in place and um, you know, how I had, and I don't even know how I came to the place where I was strong enough in my mind to profile what I was about to do, but I did it. And it, I'm amazed at my own decisions. I'm amazed, but that was, you know, setting some pretty firm boundaries and then having to work through the list of, of um, you know, so if I set this boundary, what what am I going to lose here? Am I going to yeah. lose, you know, am I going to lose a really good friendship? Am I going to lose, you know, a long-term friendship? Am I going to lose um, the support person? Am I going to lose whatever? All of these things I had to work through it and, and think to myself, um, you know, it was a risk-based analysis, just exactly what you Yes, that's about. the word. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but the thing is, is that also um, you have to, there has to be a point where you get to where you, um, you know, no matter what the outcome, you're protecting your mental health, you're protecting yes. yourself. So, you know, boundary setting is, you know, it's a conundrum really, isn't it as well? But yeah. It is. And that takes wisdom. So, you know, that's a, that's a whole nother area because like we've talked about your own thinking at this point, but you're also talking about another area that can be damaging, which is someone else's uh, projections on you and I talk about that too I call that the voice of destruction because generally those voices come from people that we've opened ourselves up to they're usually trusted people be it a partner or a parent or a coach or a teacher or whatever and and those voices can really really break us down mine was a, one of my instrument teachers when I did my degree many years ago who told me how I was the worst of the worst of the worst and yeah and you know, I, again, it came back to a choice, though. It came back to a choice because I could have taken what he said on board and never played again, mm -hmm. which I didn't. And I ended up going on to quite a full professional music career for many, many years. We have choices who we let in and who we don't. And what you're saying about boundaries is the very thing that's going to protect us when we do come up against these voices of destruction who, who will beat us down and say things that can be so damaging. So you think back to the time, you know, where you had a teacher or, or a parent telling you, oh, you're no good, you'll never amount to anything. Like if that's still playing on loop in your head, you are going to struggle. And that is another thing that you need to do the pattern interrupt and start reframing. Hang on a minute that's not true because and be able to say why well actually I, I I'm a functioning adult now I'm married I've got kids I can drive a car I can hold a job so what they said is logically not true need to be able to pull apart those things so it kind of all comes back really to um what you think of yourself so that that's another whole kettle of fish really. yeah it is you could have had a, an abusive childhood so you get to you know, 20s, 30s, whatever, and you have really bad self-talk because you're abused. So yeah. then when you're trying to come back to the whole, I am good, I am worthy, I am all that, you don't have any of that to yeah. go on. You know, That's I right. This is just such a bizarre example, but it's one that never, ever goes out of my head. So every time I go and put gas in my car, every single time without fail I remember as I'm putting as I'm pulling the um, gas thingy out of my car mm. I give it a little shake so that I don't get you know gas all over the place and put it back in I remember when I was 20 maybe 23 my, and I'd had my little baby and my sister her and I were together and she'd had her baby and we were so broke I mean we were poor I, I we you know we came from an interesting background so I didn't have much any self-love actually um, oh. and I was just you know like it was just not a you know like I wasn't I didn't have good self-esteem any of that and I remember my sister coming out uh, giggling and she said that the um cashier or whatever had said is she trying to get every last drop out of that gas thingy oh, yeah 
So the the self talk that went through my head is, oh, he knows I'm poor. He's looking at my crappy car mm. and this looks yeah. like a stolen mum. I've got all these kids. I'm such a loser. Blah blah. And my self talk was so real to me. Like those, you know, what that person thought of me was so real to me that every single time, without fail, when I get gas, that runs through my mind again. Even yeah. though I'm out of that place now, and I, you know, my self esteem's good now, but I still replay that story through my head, and that is the power of destructive words in you absolutely absolutely it's amazing you know those little like I could sit with you too and I could still rattle off all these occasions in my childhood and my teens and, and my adult early adulthood where things were said and it's amazing how those things sear into your mind and and part of that is because you keep replaying it you know when you've got something wrong with your tooth and your tongue keeps touching that spot you keep kind of touching it and, and replaying it. And in the end, it becomes so ingrained in your thinking. And that's where one of those loops come up. And that's where, you know, going to a life coach or going to a therapist can help if it's, a, if it's something that's so ingrained that you're struggling dealing with. You know, there's different exercises you can do. But if I can just give you another real basic exercise that anyone can start doing today. So other than popping that little photo of yourself on the fridge, sit down, put on some music, get yourself a drink, get everyone out of the way, just write down 50 good things about yourself. Mm, yeah. And that can be simply that I can feed my family. Mm. I can cook a healthy meal. Start with whatever. And then whenever those voices start to come in, out comes that list. Well, hang on a minute. I'm not a loser because I can do 50 wonderful things. Again, it's retraining the thinking, but you've taken the time to get yourself ready to deal with that. Can I, can I also, this is for the group, not for you, so, mm -hmm. but um, I'll, I'll talk anyway, I'll talk yeah, about yeah. you. Um, so, you know, when I was in my um, marriage and it was a, a, extremely abusive, not, like mm. proper narcissistic, not just the key, you know, how it's a tag yeah. word these days, but proper narcissistic. And my husband at the time, he was, I don't know, I guess he was a hurting, hurting person because you don't say the things that like that to people unless you're really deeply yeah. traumatized yourself. But he would say to me, you ugly, fat, whore, you're disgusting, you're good for nothing, you're worthless. He would say to me, you're worthless. I remember being so low in my life, um, sitting there one day on my bed and just looking at my wrist, just looking backwards and forwards in my wrist and just, and like, like sitting there kind of almost like in a trance and then being like, oh, wow, like actually catching that I was suicidal. Yeah. Not even knowing that I was. Yeah. So real interesting because sometimes when you're so deeply in the trauma, it is it's and there's nobody that you feel like you can talk to and you're you've isolated yourself so much yeah. and you know you're completely stuck in a corner and it's dark and it's black you know I didn't have the mental emotional energy to write 50 things out I could barely even yeah you know I could barely even talk I was so shut down I remember and it was a bible verse so sorry for you guys who aren't into bible um stuff but um I wrote um this verse on my mirror in my bedroom um she is more precious than rubies oh, rubies and pearls yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. Something like that anyway yeah so I wrote that on my mirror and that was all I could come up with just that yeah. one well, I didn't even and that's where it, it that's where you start yeah and, and, you know, I just looked at that every day. I didn't believe it. I didn't yeah. feel it. I didn't, you know, I just, there was nothing about it that made me, it didn't feel real. Yeah. And I even remember my husband coming and, and reading it on the mirror and going, <coughs> <coughs> like, yeah, whatever, you so yeah. are not. But just that one thing, it was really, it was the beginning of um, the breaking of a cycle. Yeah. It was the very minutest beginning, but it yeah. was, the beginning of me going I'm not gonna die I, I choose yeah. not to die yeah that so. choice yeah you chose to fight for yourself and and that's the phrase I really want to say today to Natalia I've said this to so many people over the years you need at some point to choose to fight for yourself if if it's only for your babies to start off with yeah for me it was yeah but you need to make that choice today. If you are in that low space, honey, fight for yourself. Oh, God, that's so, oh, oh that's yeah. so big. Uh, oh, man, that really. Oh, yeah, I know, I'm feeling it too. Can, I just know that's for a particular woman. I just feel that that's for someone out there that needs to hear that. 
Yeah. Oh, oh. And the <laughs> other thing I want to say too, sorry, Natalia, That's is right. you're prob so many of us wait for permission. We wait for permission to be allowed to chase our dreams or to do this or to do that. And I want to say, if you are someone who's holding yourself down and staying small and everything, I'm giving you permission. I'm giving you permission to start flowering to be yourself, to choose to dream, to choose to leave all the negative stuff behind, even if it's just your dream is just to get out of the house and walk, anything, whatever. But I'm giving you permission to actually start taking back some ground on your life, you know? So I am um, actually, um, you know, even, and this might be quite spiritual as well, take it how you want, but I, I feel like sometimes those ones who have the biggest battles like who have the most against them the ones who feel like they're under attack all the time or one thing after the other comes at them and you know those ones that just which is actually probably all of us actually it is all of us but yeah. you know I feel like um that should we don't think of it like this but that should be a sign to you that you've got an amazing purpose because it's like when you've got an awesome purpose you you just find yourself under massive attack you just do it just happens yep. and I feel like that's I mean if you're under attack right now if you're feeling attacked right now and you're feeling really low right now think just think to yourself I wonder what's at the other side yep. of this attack I wonder what's at the other side of this depression this anxiety you know this abusive relationship I wonder what's at the other side of this yep. because it has to be good if there's something so forceful trying to keep me away from that that's my own belief but yep. I mean no, I, I totally agree with you because I know how much, like I could sit down with you and as any woman could and go, <clears throat> this is my life. This happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, you know, and I've had a great life. I'm, I'm the first to say that I've had a great life compared to so many, but I've still had my crap, my battles and things in it, you know, particularly with ill health with myself and with my husband where we've nearly died and all sorts of things. Everyone has something. Everyone has a story. But if you can not let that story pull you down, but you can actually reframe it and use it as a way to reach others, mm. then you're going to find that you start feeling lighter too. And that's probably one thing I want to mention too. That's probably one of my biggest keys. If you are feeling crap and you've got that tape loop going, look around you. What can you do to do, help someone else? Because often just taking the focus off yourself and breaking it and putting it on someone else can be the very thing. It can be that pattern interrupt that helps you then to start reframing things. And uh, yeah. It's a real universal law, isn't it? Again, it is. spiritual or biblical or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, um, being the help for someone else when you, in the exact way that you need help, being the help yeah. for somebody else is, is so powerful, actually. Yeah. It really is. It really is. So, and, you know, if nothing else, I just hope that, you know, you'll fight for yourself. You'll do these little little practical things that will help you. If you know you need more help, you'll go reach out and, and get that help. Remembering if you, need, you feel that there's depression there, you go to a medical professional, you do that. And then the final little, final little practical exercise for you, if that's, if that's okay with you, Natalia, mm -hmm. is, is the old, I, again, I was talking to a lady the other day and I loved how she phrased it, the rocking chair test. If you're stuck in a spot at the moment, picture yourself when you're 80 sitting in your rocking chair. What would that person be saying to you now? Would they be saying, hang in there, keep going. Actually, there's something exciting coming. Or would they be saying, honey, don't give up. You know, you've got so much more to live. I don't want to live with regret. Or would they be saying, I wish you had done more. I wish you had done da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So start, you know, talk to your baby self, picture your elderly self. And between them, you'll know, do you want to stay in this place or do you want to choose to start breaking it and moving forward? And I guarantee when you move forward, the ripple effect to your family is going to be phenomenal as well. Amazing. Yeah. And just um, a little story, final, final story, even to reiterate your point, yeah. is today on my Facebook memories um, popped up a... Um, just me telling everybody that I finally, you know, the babies are finally not quite as hard as they were. And um, I've just started um, a business course and I think the clogs in my brain are turning again. And my, I come from a lineage of really smart people and I feel like it's starting to happen in my brain again. I'm finding myself again and I feel like something big's going to happen. 
And do you know what? This is the month that I started 30 plus and fabulous because of doing that free training, free T1 Anga. I couldn't afford anything else. Yeah. Wasn't even the best course in the whole wide world. All it was was something that got my brain and my clogs of my brain turning. And I came up with this idea and it was yeah. 30 plus and here we are right now yeah. and I, now I get to interview amazing people because I don't have all the expertise but I get to interview people who do have the expertise and I get to facilitate it so that other women can be helped so yeah. all of the abuse that I went through all of the pain all of the trauma my horrible marriage all of that all of that was not for nothing because now I get mm -hmm. to ask people like you for answers to the questions that even I have and then we all get collectively yeah. to have some healing so amazing love it love it that's that's powerful Natalia that's so powerful and you had a choice at that time didn't you to yeah. to do that course to keep doing the course even when it might have been boring or hard to get your head around whatever and look at the result of it look at yeah. the result yeah beautiful I I agree. Okay, so before, thank you so much for your wisdom. Oh, um, so before pleasure. we go, do you have any, um, is there, can I leave some links or anything like that for different resources that you I didn't even think about that yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll give you some links that you can post. I've got a couple of little free things that the ladies might like. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some links and things and I'll put some tools there for some of the ladies they might like to go have a read and and everything I think the main thing is just like Natalia said it's it's just knowing that you're not alone mm -hmm. that all women go through this to some level or other and 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 there's nothing wrong there's nothing embarrassing there's nothing shameful about it we all battle it but mm -hmm. find the people you can be vulnerable with and start with the group if there's nobody else in your life start with the group reach out Natalia's got a phenomenal group here Mm -hmm. and uh yeah take okay. courage thank you so much thanks heaps for your time i'm gonna try and um, just pleasure. close us off on um facebook now and we'll just um if you stick around for a little wee chat okay thanks girls thanks for watching see you all soon